he founded Spit That in, I want to say, June of 2002. And since then, organically, a number of rituals have started. So for instance, when someone is introducing a new piece, something that they've never done before, then someone uh, will say new shit, and then someone else will say, fresh out the ass, son. And then someone else will say, just hit the water. And then somebody else will say, bloop. And so these pieces, developed over time. It started out with just saying new shit, which is sort of derivative of hip hop culture. DJ Clue, who did a series of popular mix mixtapes in the 90s, he would always say, new from Jay-Z, new from so-and-so. That was just his thing. So new shit, I think, came from there. Fresh Out the Ass Sun came from Mary Bowman. Rest in peace. She's very important to the um, Spit That family. Um, she was actually born HIV positive, and she used her life to do poetry about um, being an HIV survivor. Wayne is a proud winner of the first ever Mary Bowman Award, which he was issued this year, I believe, earlier this year. But Mary Bowman said, fresh out the ass, son. And I think B. Doug, Brandon Douglas, I think he added just hit the water. And then Loop, I don't know exactly where that came from. It came from the toilet. Donald Trump holding a re-election rally on Juneteenth. It's like the KKK holding a revival in Rosewood. It's like Stephen Glass teaching a course on journalistic ethics. I put the lie in libel, baby, yeah. It's like 50 Cent doing a Ja Rule tribute at the Fire Festival. Damn, homie. It's like Nas performing ether at Jay-Z's birthday party. Fuck Jay-Z. It's like Kanye West declaring that George Bush doesn't care about black people, only to ultimately become as washed away by the MAGA craze as the Gulf Coast was washed away by Katrina's waves. Hey, you ain't got the answers, yay. Donald Trump holding an orange is the new president shindig thingamajig on Juneteenth, Emancipation Day, in Tulsa. It's like Carol Baskin shooting a sequel to Tiger King in Joe Exotic's former park and calling it Tiger Queen. Hey, cool cats and kittens. It's like Tina Turner being invited to open up for a pimp convention hosted by Ike Turner. Eat the cake, anime, anime. It's like Dr. Fauci catching COVID-19 at a coronavirus press conference after getting sneezed on by the president. Achoo! Damn, grabbed him by the Fauci. Donald Trump holding a Make America Hate Again Festivus to mess with the rest of us on Freedom Day in Tulsa, Oklahoma, home of Black Wall Street. It's like George Zimmerman plinking on Trayvon Martin's grave while sipping Arizona iced tea and sucking on some Skittles. Taste the rainbow beast mode. It's like the Minneapolis cop who killed George Floyd and his three accomplices who kneeled next to him, serving as pallbearers in George Floyd's funeral. Wait in the slaughter. It's like Satan himself pissing on Jesus Christ while he hang from the cross. How's that for holy water? No, no, no. Donald J. Trump holding a Keep America goddamn great conclave on Juneteenth in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 99 years after the Black Wall Street massacre. While the ink on our Black Lives Matter protest posters is still as wet as the blood in Breonna Taylor's bedroom, is just like, like Donald Trump being elected president of the United States in the first place. It is nose thumbing nerve at its nonsensical nadir. It is an abomination of hypocrisy whose ridiculousness in nature is exceeded only by the obliviousness of its perpetrators. It is a disrespect too specific to be an accident. It is, in other words, exactly what I have come to expect of America. Thank <laughs> you.
Founded Spit That in June of 2002, and since then, organically, a number of rituals have started. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my! Obviously, derivative of the Wizard of Oz. It's just something that we would say just to get everybody together, just to let them know the show is starting. So, lions and tigers and bears, and everybody says, "Oh my." Usually, we always say it at the beginning of the show, but sometimes when things get a little round functions, little side conversations start, that's how we get back together.
Well, we founded Spit That in June of 2002. And since then, organically, a number of rituals have started. Fat Boy Sean is the most involved legend. We were on our second venue when Spit That was at Mocha Hut Cafe, now defunct, but it was on U Street between 13th and 14th Streets. This particular year, it was like the late 2000s, must have been like 2008, something like that. I could look in the calendar and really see, but Thursday night was Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day can be a very contentious thing in open mic circles. People come through and do all their love poems and the single people feel like crap or people get broken up with right before Valentine's Day and they come and do poems cursing out their ex, which also makes everybody feel like crap. We didn't want to censor anybody, but we wanted to vary up the vibe, so we started the open mic list early. It had three columns, love poem, fuck love poem, poem that got nothing to do with love. That way when the night came, we could alternate energies. Because we started the list early and we passed around the audience, we couldn't necessarily correlate names and faces. So somebody signed up as Fat Boy Sean. We had never had a Fat Boy Sean before and we didn't know who it was. So when the night came, we had to call every name because he might have been there. Give it up for Fat Boy Sean. Spit that audience goes crazy, shows love. Dude never shows up until the end of the night when Fat Boy Sean actually in the flesh showed up. And we said, oh, you're Fat Boy Sean. We've been, you know, celebrating you all night. Every time we say your name, we applaud. But you weren't here. He explained that he was a rapper who was going to try spoken word for the first time. But since he had gotten applause without speaking a word, then his spoken word career could never get better. Therefore, he retired. Now we never saw him again, and we got to keep the name. So from then on, we say, give it up for Fat Boy Sean if somebody signed the list and they're not there when we call them. That's the story of Fat Boy Sean. Well, we founded Spit That in, I want to say, June of 2002. 
And since then, organically, a number of rituals have started. So for instance, when someone is introducing a new piece, something that they've never done before, then someone uh, will say new shit, and then someone else will say, fresh out the ass, son. And then someone else will say, just hit the water. And then somebody else will say, bloop. And so these pieces developed over time. It started out with just saying new shit, which is sort of derivative of hip hop culture. DJ Clue, who did a series of popular mix mixtapes in the 90s, he would always say, new from Jay-Z, new from so-and-so. That was just his thing. So new shit, I think, came from there. Fresh Out the Ass Sun came from Mary Bowman. Rest in peace. She's very important to the um, to that family. Um, she was actually born HIV positive, and she used her life to do poetry about um, being an HIV survivor. Dwayne is a proud winner of the first ever Mary Bowman Award, which he was issued this year, I believe, earlier this year. But Mary Bowman said, fresh out the ass, son. And I think B-Doug, Brandon Douglas, I think he added just hit the water. And then Loop, I don't know exactly where that came from. It came from the toilet. Founded Spit That in June of 2002. And since then, organically, a number of rituals have started. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. Obviously derivative of the Wizard of Oz. It's just something that we would say just to get everybody together, just to let them know the show is starting. So lions and tigers and bears and everybody says, oh my. Usually, we always say it at the beginning of the show, but sometimes when things get a little rambunctious, little side conversations start, that's how we get back together.
Sinryu for our loss. I just cried for my son because someday I could become a hashtag. He cried for me when he saw my tears. We both are mourning innocence. My mother watches in awe, worried her two boys don't have Kevlar skin. In the Bible, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. These are lies. I still pray that we not be prey. 300 down by cops before May. My son is asleep. Pray I never have to know of him not waking. spit that in June of 2002 and since then organically a number of rituals have started. Fat Boy Sean is the most involved legend. We were on our second venue when Spit That was at Mocha Hut Cafe, now defunct, but it was on U Street between 13th and 14th Streets. <laughs> this particular year, it was like the late 2000s, must have been like 2008, something like that. I could look in the calendar and really see, but Thursday night was Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day can be a very contentious thing in open mic circles. People come through and do all their love poems and the single people feel like crap or people get broken up with right before Valentine's Day and they come and do poems cursing out their ex, which also makes everybody feel like crap. We didn't want to censor anybody, but we wanted to vary up the vibe, so we started the open mic list early. It had three columns, love poem, fuck love poem, poem that got nothing to do with love. That way when the night came, we could alternate energies. Because we started the list early and we passed around the audience, we couldn't necessarily correlate names and faces. So somebody signed up as Fat Boy Sean. We had never had a Fat Boy Sean before and we didn't know who it was. So when the night came, we had to call every name because he might have been there. Give it up for Fat Boy Sean. Spit that audience goes crazy, shows love. Dude never shows up until the end of the night when Fat Boy Sean actually in the flesh showed up. And we said, oh, you're Fat Boy Sean. We've been, you know, celebrating you all night. Every time you say your name, you applaud. But you weren't here. He explained that. He was a rapper who was going to try spoken word for the first time, but since he had gotten applause without speaking a word, then his spoken word career could never get better, therefore he retired. Never, we never saw him again, and we got to keep the name. So from then on, we say, give it up for Fat Boy Sean if somebody signed the list and they're not there when we call them. That's the story of Fat Boy Sean.
Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, my. Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, my. Shoot your shot, she said, in that wig that she had of making Fuerte San Facil. Su boca una botella with words for wine, refined in the fertile vineyard of her mind. Her very palate, a palate. The intonation of her tannins, a body of work with legs for days, leaving me sideways. The intonation of her interjections, the cuvee of her consonants, effervescently pressed into the vino of her vowels, like A, E, I, O, U. Would you like to dance? Your hand fits perfectly in mine. Our slide step, magical. All you have to do is follow what you feel, if anything is felt, that is. Because every day we pass up opportunity. Every night we write lines that shift each other's worlds. Guess that's all our fault. We shiver tectonic plates to hold up a platonic relationship, but we both know that's on shaky ground. That's all our faults. Cause I know worlds collided when our lips coincided and that dang near imploded into your... Shoot your shot, she said, checking me to throw free while herself shooting three. Cavalierly challenging me to have a ball, to rock it into her golden state, to play chef with her curry until it hardens into clay to bring my thunder to just west of her brook. Daring me to work my magic, to wish away the walls with the wizardry of my words. Buck me up to keep it grisly and nick her with my spurs. To bring the heat and blaze a trail as if my clip was full. To talk that jazz with hawkish sass. To jump, man, no bull. You know what? We should be dancing with each other right now instead of running off to our friends, suppressing our emotions like magma pockets just under the skin's crust. Because when our volcano erupts, we'll both end up burned. And somebody might not make it out alive, be it the dance floor, your current partner, or my self-confidence. So can we dance? I mean, your rhythm was steady and my shuffle never lost its shake. Da-da, 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 da Add bass, change place, feet meet with heartbeat, driven by your sweet soft cheeks as we groove to imaginary patterns. I whisper comments that echo throughout your caverns, topic, combustion of our atoms. But this, this is yet to happen. I'm just trying to figure out what I have to do to possibly convince you that we could have the perfect romance but you haven't answered if you'd like to dance. Shoot your shot, she said, and so I did. What's going on, Spit That? Bless up, bless up, bless up. I am Drew Anderson, one of your hosts. And my name is Dwayne B. Uh, I am your other host. And we welcome you to the Spit That Residency with Willie Mammoth. Well, we hope that Y'all are surviving these tropical storm times. Mm, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. With these the thunder and the times. lightning, the rain and the and the strain. Word. We made it here in the name of poetry, creativity, and expression. And we have got quite a show for you tonight with the double feature of Lauren Low May and Brick Sankofa. Woo! Yeah, yeah. So Real quick, so that you know, um, there are a few ways, even with the digital space and the screens and whatnot, there are a few ways you can show love. Um, you can definitely show some love in the chat. Uh, you know, uh, you may notice that there's a little chat option at the bottom. Feel free to type some yays, type some yeses, some woos, all that good stuff. Show some love in the chat um, for those who are on Zoom. And then if you're on Facebook, uh, feel free to, you know, hit the different emojis that are options on Facebook as well so that folks know that you are feeling what they are sharing. I think at this time, it, we need to introduce Shelby, yes, Dwayne? Yes, indeed. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I'm here representing Wooly. Um, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spit Dat Digital, the live online version of Spit Dat in residence at Wooly Mammoth. Um, I'm sure they're going to talk about it a little more, but tonight's theme is Swoon Festival. And as Dwayne B. put it so delightfully himself, um, Swoon Festival is poetry that embodies the feeling of butterflies bursting from the cocoons in your belly when a certain someone walks by. An exploration of love through poetry released in 2014. 
or an exploration of love via an open mic on August 3rd. And um, I just love the way you just capture things so well. Um, but for those of you who don't know, my name is Shelby Brown and I am the Associate General Manager at Woolly Mammoth. And on behalf of our entire team, including our board, our staff, and our company of artists, we're thrilled to have you with us this evening. Um, and we cannot wait for the day when you, we get to welcome you back into uh, Spit Dat in residence at Woolly Mammoth. But until then, the experience is live on the internet. Um, and so recently we named Spitdat as one of Woolly Mammoth's connectivity core partners. And we've had lots um, that we're building together. And I know you guys should just stay tuned for the cool things we're gonna do together. Um, and we're so excited to have them as one of our partners. Um, and just an FYI, this um, event is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook, but don't worry audience members, you won't be part of the stream. Um, but unless you are performing, uh, please be on mute. Um, so that uh, use the chat functions to show our poets some love. And while these artists are incredible, it can be hard to perform to a bunch of black squares. Um, so I wanna encourage you to show your face if you're feeling comfortable to do so. Um, another way to show love uh, is tagging Woolly Mammoth and Spit Dat on social media using at Woolly Mammoth um, TC and Spit Dat DC and Spit Happens. Whoa, I have so much more respect for Kristen who says that monthly. <laughs> Um, I hope y'all are ready to have a good time tonight because I know I am um, on this gloomy day. This is a little bit of sunshine and we have a great list of open micers and two dope features. So without further ado, back to Dwayne B and Droopy. So I am looking for the link for our open mic list so I can know who our first artist is who we're going to be introducing from the open mic to perform. And now I see it. How about that? Boom. So while I'm opening that, you know, Dwayne, you can talk to the folks. Yeah. Um, so Swoon Festival, it is a celebration and exploration of love. Um, and I know like folks are like, it's not February. Why are we doing love stuff? Well, you know what? Everybody needs a little bit of love. Everybody could use a lot more love, especially right now with everything that's going on. And when we're talking about love, it's not just romantic ah, love. It's also uh, that, that love that gets you through the hard times, um, that self-love and that self-reflection that reminds you, you know what, I need, to do, I need to do better or I'm doing fine and you know what, that's okay. Um, so it's it's all of that love. It's that all-encompassing agape love that uh, surrounds all of us and connects all of us. So yeah, when you think Swoon Festival and when you think about the things that folks are going to be sharing tonight, think about all of that love and what we're bringing in, what we're stirring together, and what we're making tonight. Thank you, Dwayne. And so with that so well said, are we ready to introduce our first artist from the open mic? Woo! Hey. All right, our first artist from the open mic. I know you signed up as number two, but what happens sometimes with open mic lists is no one signs up as number one. So <laughs> number two becomes number one. But Spit That Residency vibe, I Spit That Audience is gonna give you that number one stunner love so that regardless of what number you signed, you gonna shine. So Nico Ramos, are you ready to rock and roll? On deck is Morel, I hope, Mariel, I hope I'm saying that right. But coming up right now, and I see y'all already giving love in the chat, so thank you for that. Please give it up, y'all, for Nico Ramos. Yeah, man. What's up, everybody? I'm glad to be here, glad to be here, and thank you. Wow, you said my name so perfectly clear, man. I'm glad to be here. So um, this piece is called Real. You see, she's made to prosper through her dignity and diligence with manifested wings, as she flies through and gracefully touches the lives in her direction. With her smile, her laugh, her gentleness, sensitivity, empathy, comfort levels to the high for those who speak with her and to her and for her and about her. The thought and notion of her makes me scared, so I essentially doubted me and not her. Not about what she can give, what she can take, what she is, what she ain't, how she lives, she loves, she writes, she walks, talks, speaks, teaches, preaches, draws, or paints. The rhythm of her words go deeper than her grand performances and sold out shows. 
deeper than the stages and mics and books and recordings and all the videos, deeper than her pictures and her work and her notable name. It's the rhythm in her soul, youth and joy and as wise as gold that makes me believe that time with her will never go in vain. It's her eyes and her heart that connect to me that makes me shiver and shake and worry that I'm not worthy of what she cooks up, bakes. You see, because the connection is healthy, the spiritual bond is wealthy, and the feelings are amplified, not even a hint or a speck of a lie, something so good, but yet I run, yet I hide to avoid the pain and the struggle that comes with being accepted. Because truly if and only if you can accept the acceptance, then you'll soon realize that acceptance is essentially rejection. Because you push away and fight those thoughts of worry and doubt and shame, all those thoughts that can make you fear her one day taking your last name. After countless times in the past of being reminded mm, of your flaws and all your voids for someone to come in and embrace the peace that comes with just a piece of your life and say that she enjoys what she sees what she senses and what she knows matter of fact for someone to just know is scary but yet edifying to my soul arranging my path towards heaven's ways to lift me up and believe in what's left of my rough and emasculating days to see something greater than what i can ever see see it's all scary to actually think that someone like that is real. So I ran with disbelief. My deepest regret is being in her presence only to just tease her. Time after time, halfway, hearts invested, then poof, I leave her. She is immaculate, rich with beauty, love and grace. You'll feel the same when you see her. Thank you. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Yo, Nico, uh, where, like, uh, how can folks support you? Like, what's going on with you artistically? Um, so I'm an actor in the DMV area. Of course, you know, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of theaters are shut down right now, but um, I'm an actor, I'm a poet, writer. Um, I do a lot of, as many virtual open mics as I can. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Nico Ramos. Um, I'll put it in the chat, N-E-K-O-R-A-M-O-S. Bless up, bless up, bless up, bless up. Thank you, family. Thank you. And yeah, Thank like you. impassioned, impassioned energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dope things, dope things, dope things. Um, just to let you know, friends, um, who are interested in getting on the open mic list, it is not too late. Uh, we are going to add the list back into the chat. Um, and then if folks want to share, feel free to make that happen. Um, Drew Tang, um, I believe our next artist was Michaela. Oh, it was Miriel. I'm gonna put it in. Miriel, Miriel. Um, is Miriel in the chat? Uh, has Miriel entered the chat? I'm looking, I don't believe I've seen Miriel pop up. Boom, that's the thing about open mics. Give it up for Fat Boy Sean! Hey. He's a classic. <laughs> Yo. They're here when they're not here. What What's dope is like seeing the chat. Like if you're if you can if you're in the chat, it's active. It's going wild for Fat Boy Sean. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing to witness. Yo. Um. All right then. You know what? Is it okay if I do a poem, y'all? I'm a, I, I always, I always ask, I know it's a digital thing, so it's kind of hard for folks to, folks to respond, but yeah, I'm gonna do a piece that I don't often do. Uh, it is from my 2014 chat book, Swoon Festival. Um, huh. All right. Me mentally prepare for this. All right. It's called Water Cycles. Your palms are the ocean floor. Deep, soft, lined with a planet's worth of experience. Your heart beats tectonic platelets. Arms are resulting tsunamis crashing on shoulder-bladed shores. How beautiful to kiss the ocean breeze and know its misty smile. I don't know how to swim. 
I am lost when you wave hello, submerged in a touch. You could easily be the end of me. I want this. I've heard drowning is the peaceful way to go. You are surrounded, wrapped in what gives us life. Then you just return. Give back that which you've been granted. To fall into you is reciprocity. I'm rain returning to the source. You make, you make me make you make me begin again. We exist because of each other. The rock bathed in ocean tide. The sand washed away by crashing wave. The moon push pulling the nautical goddess. We relate naturally. I must drown in you. A skipping stone can't swim in itself. Poem. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, I know, right? It's like a uh, like weird artsy stuff. Boom. All right. So I think it may be uh the time for us to bring our first feature. Um, where I'm seeing folks in the chat. We're we're love love. Um, so uh, our first feature is Lauren May. Uh, uh, so you may not know who Lauren May is. Uh, but I can tell you right now, the Washington DC area, the DMV, as we like to call it, um, as well as the national poetry scene has known Low for quite some time. Um, a member of, uh, or a former member of the DC Youth Slam team uh, that went on to BMV, um, a ongoing feature at multiple open mics, including recently this Friday at uh, Floetic Fridays, um, just an amazing writer um, with a few publications and a whole lot of healing energy. Um, there, there are very few artists who do the work for themselves and in themselves and then share that work with the world in a way that allows us to heal and process as well. And like, Lauren does that. Lauren is consistently doing that. And that's a gift. That's something that we are honored to have the chance to share and be a part of. Um, so before we welcome Lome to the stage, um, we are going to make sure that the, uh, the list, so there are a couple of things that we always do with Spit That. Um, one thing is we pass around a card to let folks know uh, that everybody who's witnessing the show is enjoying and loves and supports the artist. So um, that card link is gonna be placed into the Zoom group chat. Feel free to you know, click into the chat. Oh, it's there right now. Feel free to click that and then show some love, um, sign it, say a few kind words, all that good stuff. Uh, we're gonna be doing that for both of our features tonight. Also, uh, the, there will be like a, a like their PayPal or their Cash App will also be in there. Feel free to toss them a little, little tip, you know, let them know that you're feeling what they're feeling. All right? So I've talked enough. I've said enough stuff. I need y'all to bang your hands together wherever you are in this world and show some love right now for Lauren May. Peace, y'all. Um. Super happy to be here. Super happy to be sharing space with everyone who is in the space. Um, I have some poems all centered around love. Uh, and Dwayne's poem was like a good segue because they're all kind of about like love and like water, um, which is the title of the first one I'm going to read. Um, but before I read, um, wherever you are in the world, could y'all just take two deep breaths with me? Um, if you'd like to, we're going to inhale for three seconds, hold it for four, and then exhale for eight, and we're going to do that twice. Uh, on the count of three, one, two, three. And one more time, one, two, three. Thank y'all for sharing that moment with me. I'm gonna go ahead in the first poem. 
is love still? Is it solid or does it flow? Love is like water from a river taken with cupped hands. When it finds its way through the spaces in between my fingers, is it still love? When it returns back to the river from which it came, love is a pool to be poured into, not pulled from. Or is love a tree planted, still and solid, sheltering in shadows? What does love do? Is it moving? Can we call a fluid thing love or must we be able to grab and grasp and hold long enough to be sure that it is there? Maybe love is like water, something so unique it takes the shape of whatever name we give to it, like home, like honey, like baby, like I'm grateful right now to exist, like water filling in the space of a deep breath. Thank you. <laughs> um, this next poem, you guessed it, is about love. Um, it's called An Alternate Heaven for Love. I believe it's after uh, Danette Smith. And yeah, I'll just get right into it. In an alternate heaven for love, there would be no name for it. There would be no need to find a collection of sounds to cling to, to describe something so full of everyone and everything it is. In an alternate heaven, love just is and always will be. It is moving. It is me and whole and you and full. See, there is no fear, only silent acceptance of both frequency, everything there, including pain just is in the most beautiful way. Even tragedy becomes lovely and everything is a lesson to be learned, you see there. The tears are soft and purposeful and we breathe with assurance there. How simple it is to breathe is always enough. So we eat and we dance and we commune. We gather in bunches small or large, but always light. There's death and destruction still. We just call it by different names like transitioning and transforming and all that is left in this heaven is peace and tranquility or whatever you wanna call it. Cause here you can call anything, anything. In this heaven, you are the creator. There is no God for you to cling to for hope of something existing somewhere better than this. Here, there is no alternate. It becomes the place where you are who you always were and not weighted down by things like time and there everyone smiles. The good and bad balance each other out and all that is left is feeling. Here, nothing is better than this moment because you claimed it so. It feels good because you claimed it so. Freed yourself from the ideas that heaven was anything but unconditional love but this heaven is everything and everything is love thank you mm, 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 mm. um i have another poem this one is called water you see the theme there love <laughs> water <laughs> uh yeah i'm gonna just get right into it We run, me and all of myself. We run like we've been here before. Like we know what's out there waiting and it's nothing, nothing for us anyway. So we run like legs don't exist. Like willpower, instinct and intuition will lead us to wherever we run away from the idea that we need to exchange our energy for paper to only then turn around and exchange that paper for energy. We run because our energy is spent better running. We run like we reject paper, run from all the people screaming, trying to convince us to fit into a part of their machine to keep it moving. We run like we're unafraid to always be moving. For no other reason besides the fact that we want to, we run past these imaginary borders. We run through lines on maps. We run because all of this belongs to all of us. And if time existed, we for sure spend it running. So we run and we run and we run and we run, me and all of myself run like we know it's out there in the infinite of it all. We run like we breathe, like it's so natural for us to move like this, to never stop to take someone else's fears for us into consideration. We run like we know what feels good to us, like water. We run like water on a mission to go absolutely nowhere. We run like water in love with moving, 
the freedom to always be moving. We run like we're trying to keep up with all of ourselves and all of ourselves know that peace is not a destination and it never ends this journey. So we run. Ooh, so grateful. I have just a few more poems. Uh, this poem is called Right Now. And if you can't tell from my poetry, I feel that love just is. I spent a long time meditating on love. I always felt like it was the exact opposite of what um, pain and all of those things felt like. And during my couple month long meditation, I downloaded, I guess, more or less remembered that everything is love all of the time. Love is the existence of, of both feelings that we tend to give uh, names to like good and bad and right and wrong. All of it's love. Our existence is love. Um, some real hippie stuff. <laughs> uh, so this poem uh, is attributed to that and it's called Right Now. Once upon a time called Right Now, the stars aligned and in a gift giving way, all well thought out like, all I hand picked this just for you like the universe gave us this moment. All I thought you really enjoy this like with a big goofy grin on its face, the universe said here, I give you here, give you right now because I knew you love it. Knew it would be the easiest place for us to sink in and get comfortable even gift wrapped and protected it for us all knowing it's the only thing we'd ever be certain of. The only thing we could actually ever call our own is this moment. Only thing we can grab hold of is this moment. Can taste and touch and feel and see it's all only ever this moment made just for us. And forgive me if I am in love with it. It's the only thing I ever had that makes sense. The only place I've ever felt comfortable is right now. Thank you. Ooh, I'm so grateful. Love to y'all. Uh, this poem is sort of like a love letter to myself. Um, on that same topic of like feeling as if anything that did not feel like romantic love and like outright joy was short of love and short of all of the good things that I should be feeling. And for me, um, based on a lot of trauma, I felt like that was not accessible to me. I felt like I did not have the right to love, not only love myself, but to right to love anything or anyone else when I was filled with so much trauma and pain and um, all the emotions we uh, give the word negative to. Um, so a lot of meditation. And out came uh, this poem. It's a trigger warning for assault. Um, I'm taking you all, in this poem, I'm taking everyone with me on the journey of healing through uh, those feelings. Before the first blood snaked down my legs, my body belonged to the men who knew my name, knew to call it out loud like I was a servant a merchant with fresh limbs and soft skin to sell. A body that doesn't belong to you becomes living hell. Body becomes shell to then make room for anyone else who can make themselves comfortable without permission. So then what is innocence? If for as long as I can remember, I've been passenger, bystander in my own body, you know, somebody lied to me told me I had freedom for the taking, but my body is not what anyone makes of it. My body is not made of fear. It is mine and whole and I am in control. But when we are told that our innocence is stolen, we tend to move full of guilt. When we are told that our purity is stolen, we move as if we are impure. When we are told that our decency is stolen, we move as if we are indecent. So. For everyone who believed it, 
believed that surviving assault somehow meant that we must live like we've lost the sunlight in our spirits. Breathe with me now. Remember the fire of fearlessness we only buried way deep down beneath our gut and pull it up. Remember, we were here all along, rooted in life, love, welcome home. Thank you. I have maybe two more short poems for y'all. They're really short. Another one is a love letter to myself and my body. Um, not your traditional love letter to self and body, but here it is. It's called My Body Is Not. My body is not a place for you to come in and release your stresses. My body is not a waste bin. My body is not a home for the masculinity you don't remember how to balance. You see, my body is masculine on its own. She is only welcoming union. My body deserves a wedding of light. It is a safe haven for raw love. My body does not want you. My body is and always will be without you. Any being I allow to participate in the pleasures of my love must leave their fears at the door but stepping light into my life. You know, my body knows how to protect herself. My body is not. My body is not afraid of you anymore. Thank you. And then I have this last poem for y'all. Give me one second to just find it. Okay, very, very short poem. Thank y'all for being patient. <laughs> um, I am hydrogen, a sprinkle of oxygen too. In this case, always moving, searching for other elements to bond with. I used to be a puddle, but now I am a sea. I am in a dance with the moon. I am spinning in a room full of elements. Love is the dance of atoms. Love is the puddle finding its way to the sea and I still can't swim. I heard that it's birthright, but sometimes I'm still afraid of the sea. Sometimes I am afraid to be the sea. It is easy being small in a puddle. Easy, easy. And that's it, thank y'all. <laughs> so grateful, so grateful to be here sharing space, so grateful to exist, grateful to be alive, uh, yeah. Hello, May. Thank you so much. Crowd, show some love, show some love, show some love. Um, there's a, I know that, Lauren, I know that while the set was happening, you weren't able to see the chat. Just take, take a stroll back through there. There's a whole lot of love in there for you, Superstar. I know when featuring digitally, it's hard to like feel that, but we right there with you, Superstar. Like for real, for real. Um, I, uh, we just posted the feature card again in the chat, so feel free to take a moment, sign, show some love, all that good stuff. Um, the Venmo Cash app and all the social medias just hit again. Uh, I'll say those out loud for the people who may just be listening and can't see the chat. That's at Long Love Low on Twitter and Instagram. Venmo is at Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N dash May dash 58 and the cash app is dollar sign k o a l o so yeah show some love show some support you dig um and yeah lome thank you again like absolutely fantastic and shout out to the fan the <laughs> i see you i see you all right uh that's i'm a i'm a i'm a vibe out i'm a vibe out um <laughs> i think we may be ready for our next open micer. And if I am correct, because I'm not sure, I don't think that Marielle has jumped into the chat. Marielle, if you have joined, please uh, say something in the chat so that we know that you're here. But I have the pleasure of introducing uh, absolutely amazing 
poet, uh, curator of space, um, cook, chef, um, uh, organizer of the Citizen Cipher, uh, host of Island Moon, well, chef of Island Moon Catering, host of uh, Moonlight House uh, Bed and Breakfast. Please, bang your hands together. Show a whole lot of love for who, someone who I feel is the embodiment of love. Show that love right now for Luna the Poet. Peace, peace, peace. How you doing? Hey, you can hear me well enough, yeah? Yep, yep, yepers. <laughs> Well, I would ask how everyone's doing, but <laughs> I won't be able to hear your answers. But um, yeah, I hope you're doing well. Lo, awesome feature. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, I think I'm a. I think I'm a reach in the bag and do an old piece. Um, yeah, I've been sitting here contemplating, but then when I got called up, it's time to make a decision. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go old. <sighs> Come closer. Please tell me the story of your supernova and where were you? Before impact, not trajectory, a bit off skew before event horizon. What part of the universe did you reside in and who told you? That slingshot round moon is sure to get you caught in gravity's pull. Who whispered in your ear? Hipped you on how to breathe my atmosphere. How did you get here? Course was unchartered, except you went as if by exact coordinates to my orbits for lips. Please tell me you had a little help in deciphering code. Tell me that between space and zero, you are the one. Show me what sunrise looks like where you are from. Tell me you've come from the deep reaches of space just to witness blush on sun-kissed face. Tell me you found your way to me while being lost. Admit that celestial host helped draw you close. Admit you weren't supposed to find me on purpose. Confess that one wish upon one star, once in a blue moon, granted you passage through wormhole. Confess to me the role the cosmos played, aligning my nights to your days. And then tell me what came first, the Big Bang or us. You must hold the answer to my most pressing questions. Why else would you come here if not to enlighten, if not to inspire? Surely you conspired with higher powers for safe travels, traversed universes in search of the all spark, that one spark that jump starts lonely hearts. Please share with me the wisdom of the ages. So this is why you came here, right? This is why you're here, right? This here. Right. There's that. <laughs> Thank you. That's that, all right. Thank <laughs> you, the universe, for taking yeah. us to the stars and the supernovas and <laughs> all the places and bringing us back. Word. Word. <laughs> you. Always. you look gorgeous. Me? Yeah, it looks like you got some sun, maybe just from jogging. Oh, well, thank you, you know. I, I got some sun from your palm. That's it's, it's supernova. <laughs> Word. All right, thank I'm going to disappear. Love you guys. Love you. Peace. Boom. Spit that. Y'all having a good time? I'm about to get into this next artist. Uh, yep. We have the mayor himself. As shouted out, and those of y'all who came a little earlier and saw the gallery, um, they talked about some of Spit That's rituals in our history, and we talked about new shit fresh out the ass. And this guy got a shout out as part, as one of the co-creators of our new shit um, chant, if you will. So long time Spit That regular, 
and dope poet in his own right. Please give it up for Brandon Douglas, AKA B Doug. Hey. We we heard you for a second, Bita. All right, Bita, try try again. Damn. What there we I go. Okay. Oh, y'all y'all can hear me now. Yep, we can hear you and see you. All right, cool. Uh, man, it's a jump. Hold on. No, that's not the poem. I'm sorry, y'all. It was a, a, a specific poem I want to do. Um, but I uh I cannot find it. So do you want us to call the next open mic up and bring you back? Nah, I'm gonna just do something else. Okay. Um this is uh something I shared with the student of mine yesterday and I I, I don't know. Um I think a part of uh, love is going um, through text or the fire, if you will. And a part of that is um, not necessarily uh, bashing um, the self, but being, uh, being honest about what that is and accepting who, who I am. Um, uh, this, yeah, all right, here's the poem. Uh, doesn't have a title. That means it ain't got no name. If you know, you know. Um, fire, uh, burning behind eyes, boiling tears evaporate, poof, be gone. The feeling is too strong, so I replace it. I'm never complacent because I'm always angry. That's my secret. Grappling in darkness with demons created by my mind, but still are very real. This struggle I conceal. Thank you, Maybelline, L'Oreal, for giving me the ability to storage hell in my jawline. The ferocity is necessary to bite my tongue, redigest my words, and throw up the blood to document my pain. I must harvest this hurt. It is what I know. I've grown comfortable in discomfort. I must rock my foundation. I am fierce, not like Sasha, like lion, more like king of jungle, fever rising. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I am dying to live. I am dying to give you a reason to save me because I don't know what's going on. I don't know who I am or what I am doing, but I do know that I am here. That has to mean something. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. I don't got no other pretty words and shit. Peace, a uh, lot of features. Um, love you, love May. I'm looking forward to Brissette at Kofa, and I'm out. Word. Love you, b Dub. True spill. Oh, wait, Drew, you want to say something? <laughs> ah, word, word. Yo, super key line, I am here. <laughs> like, like, it's been, it's been a very rough four months for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And being able to recognize that being here, present in this very moment, that's love. <laughs> like that's that's love. 
So yeah, shout out to B Doug. Show some love in the chat. All of that good stuff. Um, we have one more open micer, I believe, and then we get into our second super dope, amazing feature. I need y'all to bang your hands together and show some love right now for Big Homie. Hey, what's up, y'all? Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I guess since we on this love tip, um, you know, and everything like that, and I guess uh, more so, I guess we're talking internally and just spiritually and all these other things. I um, mean, we're doing some stuff old, new, all this stuff. I'll probably just go ahead from this area and uh, go on to feature number two. So here we go. I have you by yourself today so you can learn a new way of intimacy. This intimacy is not perverted, but as you become introverted, you'll get in touch with yourself. No one can truly understand the man and woman I create you to be your adversity and trials are so you can put a smile on a face in despair. When they know that you care and you're not there to take advantage of them, they will experience my grace and know that they have a place in my army. I am the commander in chief and some have the wrong belief about the weapons of mass destruction. These weapons were words that touch sin meant to do them harm, but I'm here to tell you that none of these arms will prosper. The way you fight the enemy is with an intimate relationship with me, and that's why you're by yourself today. I know it's cliche to say that you're never alone, but without me, you could have never known how to be kept in the midst of the storm. I talk to your spirit and I whisper in your ear as we spend quality time. I make it very clear the plans I have for you. When I speak my will, you want to doubt, but when it doesn't go to your plan, you want to pout, but my intimacy shows you my unfailing love. In your flesh, you may fail again and again. I need you to know that you, that I'm the only friend who sticks closer than the brother. You will discover that the lover of your soul will renew your spirit and make you whole. And that is true intimacy. I know that you're scared to love and you don't want to hurt, but as long as you know that your total worth lies in me, the intimacy will lead you to all truth. You don't have to be a sleuth. You have a clue. I am keeping you. The guilt from your past, please have no shame, but when you see your sin on others, please don't blame. I came so that you might have life. Although you are delivered, you may feel the thorn. My child, you have no reason to mourn. Jesus was born so that you might have life. So when those you meet are pushed and shoved, you can introduce into my unfailing love because my love is more than life. And the main reason that you'll be razor sharp is that you have me in your heart. So take this time of intimacy. Learn to accept my love from your friends around. You need to know that my grace abounds so you can learn to love me better. No, I don't want you to be used, but I can instruct you in what to say and do. So take this time of intimacy. I really need to give you all of your heart's desires, but I first need to be your all-consuming fire. So take this time of intimacy. So as you're by yourself today, know that you're set apart talk to me and pray i love you value the intimacy thank you right on big homie word thank you for taking us into that journey of intimacy on a spiritual level you did that's big homie right there big homie is always involved in partnering and collaborating with artists to find ways to take our art beyond conventional spaces. Um, he brought a Parisian artist who was originally American but now lives in Paris over here as part of a international exchange. And um, you know what happened and that, that made it difficult for further international exchanges, but we're hoping that's temporary. What's not temporary is Big Homie's gracious and generous spirit and his artistic um, ambitions. And I hope that those continue to prosper. Um, 
now, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, I guess with that segue, um, that uh, um, since we're talking about the whole um, partnership stuff, don't know as far as with um, trying to work with my fellow artists and other entrepreneurs in the D.C. area. So if any of you, well, we all know that Africa is not a country. There's 54 countries. Amen. So. For the fact of they have several grants that ironically, not necessarily arts and humanities that a lot of us applied for last month, uh, but for the multicultural affairs, they're only giving 10,000 for the African-American um, affairs, but they are looking for arts and all the ethnic stuff that they're doing. So it's 20,000 for African affairs. So if any of you have like any authentic African connections, I mean, I know some very, talented, brilliant brothers that was collaborating with one of our poetry brothers, and they were going to go to South Africa. And we still believe that's going to happen. Uh, maybe not with this uh, fiscal year, but um, yeah, but for a fact of if there are some people from South Africa or everybody's getting in touch with their Ghanaian and um, uh, what do you call it, Nigerian roots and Ethiopian, but they need to be in DC. So if you have those connections, DM me, contact me. I put my stuff there. It's twenty thousand for that. Um, my Latino brothers and sisters, any type of collaboration stuff you want to do, they're giving you fifty thousand. We're not going to get into the disparities of why these are different amounts, but whatever. So I'm just saying. But all these are due on Friday, so I be writing all week. Hit me up. And let's see how we can build with that. And then there's also Asian and Pacific Islander. So there's just like these different things on Zoom grants um, to where like, you know, the money's out there and they're looking for our talents. And this is the time to do it because, you know, COVID, a lot of us ain't doing much else. So we can tap into that money. So um, hit me up if um, you want to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you, you big homie. And now spit that residency, Wooly. It is time for our final feature of the evening, Britt Sankofa. Britt Sankofa is a filmmaker and theater artist with roots in Washington, D.C., Durham, North Carolina, and Cameroon. After studying film and digital media at Virginia Commonwealth and New York universities, she fell in love with theater and performance simply because there's no camera cuts and there's no take two. Now, it's interesting that she said that there's no take two because I believe we will be taking a double take at this particular feature. And the name Sankofa, of course, means to go back and get some more, to take what we need from the past and bring it forward. And I think it's fitting that Britt Sankofa is a filmmaker because when you hear her poetry, you will see how she makes film with her words, how the pictures, the imagery will be so present with you, they may in fact haunt you. I've been floored every time I've heard her share her poetry, and I think this might be her first feature. This is her first feature, y'all. All right, so we are honored at Spit That, at the Spit That Residency to host the very first feature of this brilliant artist. And we look forward to diving right into this adventure that will have us all wanting to Sankofa. So please give it up for Brit Sankofa. unmute myself. Hey, everyone. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> wow, 15 minutes is going to go by fast. I'm going to get into it. Um, shout out to Spit That. I've been going since 2009. Shout out to Willie Mammoth, some of the most thought-provoking and disturbing experiences of my life seeing shows at Willie Mammoth. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, this prompt about a swoon festival and love. Um, I have a really difficult relationship with love. She just be doing me dirty, but I can't stay away. So let's get into it. <laughs> Here we go. I like you because your soul is as dirty as mine, and we both reign supreme in our empires of dirt. You got your pile, and I got mine. But for what it's worth, I'm only interested in running wild with you through the slave quarters and catacombs. No need to parade what we got, whatever it is on horse-drawn chariots before the court, no telling what it will be, a masterpiece or a cataclysm. But you are soiled and perverse and imperfect, just like I like it. Your soil runs shallow and infertile, which is fine. I'm selfish with my seeds, but 
I do like to walk barefoot on barren land and water it with my own juices, which ain't enough for a full treatment, but just enough for a few fun nights. You are a snack of a man, a dessert, a break from a strict, well-balanced diet, a razor-thin demarcation line between wants and needs with a purple bottom lip that hangs like a frozen teardrop whenever you think too hard. And I dig that. But I don't dig too deep because victim is such a tiresome role. Can't nobody break me if my strings ain't pulled too tight, but they just might bend. And I was raised to always keep some money stored away in case I ever need to mend. Surface level lover of a man, fun size snack of a man, dirt under his fingernails and on the backs of his hands. Faulty and defective, but I lost the receipt, so I found a way to make it work for me anyway. When many wonder why, I preen my feathers and I waste my time. While my targets be so low and I don't shoot high. How I stay so wet with a nigga so dry. <laughs> to which I reply that, well, time is for white people. And I like what I like because my likelihood is divine. That patriarchal, virginal, female bullshit side in me died long time ago. So until I want what they think I should have, bring me the one with the mismatched eyeballs, one pair of shoes to his name, who makes me giggle like the back of sixth grade science class, still living in his mama crib. I'll take him as is and keep him at arm's, arm's length with my heart and my shiv. And that's pretty much enough for me. Poem two, no titles. Love can get slippery when it's wet. Wet can feel like love when it's slippery. Slippery is to wet what love is to water. Necessary, but amounts are circumstantial, futile and or dangerous. I've seen love moisten the palate. I've seen love drown Goliath or cause a body to slide unexpectedly across the floor into a heap of bones I like to call commitment. I like my love will score and slip, stuck and welded together into perfection, only to be broken by the next clumsy motherfucker not minding his step. Only Jesus walked on water. We just splashing around making a mess. Poem two. Things never end up like how they do in the movies. They say art imitates life, but sometimes it don't listen. It's ego driven, fueled by its own imagination, convinced that lavender and honey are synonymous with the smell of its own shit. Like, how much water would I need to float comfortably between two lovers? How buoyant would I have to be? How much cunning and slutty anointing can I get away with before one of them other one of them utters, I think I might love you? But things never work out like how they do in the movies, boo. <laughs> Water evaporates into humid air as hot sun reminds earth that woman's power only exists at night where no one can see. A woman with heart and hips wide enough for two burdens is a bedtime story, a fireplace tale. Shit ain't much more than a southern fried matador with a big ass and a fast tail. Bulls don't bark like dogs, and I ain't never seen no woman nailed to no cross. Part of this swoon festival is part of love. What it means to me is being honest with all my thoughts and all myself. Sometimes I don't necessarily agree with the thoughts in my head, but it's important for me to get them out anyway. So I wrote this next poem for Toyin of Tallahassee, Florida, who to me still lives, and all the other women who are forced to march alongside their predators and their oppressors. I see you and I love you, and I pray for our safety, and I pray to those to whoever can listen. Poem four, or three, where am I? Curiosity killed the cat who quaffed for the feeling of his hands around a throat, any throat. He don't know love if it don't hurt as bad as the first frost on new plants, ruined crops, hushed voices, blood that runs spice rum thick. And he don't know limits unless the breath is all squeezed out. It's a sport, right? Dance the line, trace the edge with a stick, fill it up and let go a hair of time before it bursts. Deep breaths, apologies, forehead kisses, the whole flaccid tail between the legs bit till he got the wrong neck, till he got the wrong neck and hit the wrong nerve. Felt the cold steel, warm blood, short breath, and immediately knew 
that the limit to that threshold he'd been pushing up that hill for so long was in fact his own. This is another poem is called From a Poor Man's Perspective. From a poor man's perspective, not wealth, <laughs> but a man you take pity on. A woman's love is a bullet lodged in the collarbone that the doctors say will be too difficult and sensitive to remove. Let it rise naturally to the surface. And we was in church last Sunday and the spirit was so potent, it almost ripped the pages out my hymnal. And I caught you gripping your chest and crying out, it's coming, it's coming, I can feel it. The bullet or God's return. A woman's love is an ice pack on swollen joints painful but necessary, with enough shock to right any wrong and soothe any muscle, contracting to the rhythm of its own seething pride. She likes to challenge that game. She likes to drag it out of bed by the ear for not doing the dishes, taking out the trash. And when you yield your first props, you will understand the necessity of instilling discipline with an iron fist as much as a warm bosom. A woman's love is a haint, a dirty, nasty spirit that smells worse after she leaves. She won't none too pretty and not much better in bed, but I can't get her name off my tongue. She took the baby and say she heading for Chicago. I finally hit her back after months of bruised shoulders. She said she couldn't take the abuse. Scratch that. She said she could take the abuse. She just didn't wanna do it anymore. She called and said she hated me. Called me a waste of human flesh only Satan could love. And my dick got hard. I rubbed it out as soon as she got off the phone. That voice with claws and its timbre, an intoxicating pitch, something about how she says those S's, or maybe it was the inflection in the word hate. But I learned that when she used to say she loved me, she didn't really mean it. She was just showing mercy on a poor soul such as my own, who gets his rocks off on self-deprecation and made a waste of a woman's love. So this next poem is for my grandma. I don't know where I am in time. Am I good on time? Yes, okay, I got maybe two more. All right, this poem is for my grandma, who was my real mama. I lost my mom when I was about nine years old. So my grandma was my auntie, she was my supervisor, she was my pastor, she was my doctor, she was my esthetician. I still put black tea under my armpits. Y'all try that out, it works. <laughs> That's the title of the poem, <laughs> seriously. That's the title of the poem. All right, let's get into it. Oh, let me increase, you know what? I'm gonna put on my large grandma spectacles. How about that? Boom. All right, here we go. <laughs> my auntie said there's a special place in heaven for a hooker. It's fourth in line at the free clinic where she sits cross-legged in a red pencil skirt and a run in her stocking, not tapping her foot, not clicking her nails, but swaying, chin up, spine erect and swaying with a loose grip on that ticket number slip, satisfied that despite her station, her place in heaven is secure. Of that over anything else, she is sure. My auntie told me that there's a special place in hell for fathers, big armed sweater wearing fathers with leather wallets and three by five size pictures. Fathers who tote that title as a pass and reject the badge of dad so that we know he couldn't possibly have. Not him, couldn't be. Not after all he's done for, not in the way in which he, I mean, have you seen the sheen on his well-groomed kids? Yeah, there's a special place in hell for fathers like him. And purgatory is a privileged space, my auntie says. It's where souls go to be unbothered, untouched, by earthly prayers from folks who can't see death only hurts for the living. Prayers to those who spent their whole life giving, dot in the sky, they dot the sky behind smog and city lights, only accessible by sheer faith, while the, recipi while the recipients politely return to their senders and spin through the time-space continuum, spending time or lack thereof, living for a living, doing nothing, in a doldrum scented sweetly with air and water, not staring down begrudgingly from a cloud, not staring up desperately from the pit of hot coals and sulfur, but just simply passing time. 
Oh, to be bored without consequence, my auntie says. She kisses her fist, loosely, grip, loosely gripping a paper towel and her sweaty, wrinkled hands. She says, don't send me no flowers after I'm gone. No, thank you. Living things ain't none too pretty, cut from their root, left to rot in a glass. Plus, I never like the way they smell. If you're going to leave me something at my altar space, leave me a crossword puzzle so that I know, not that you love me, but that you've been paying attention. Please, I can assure you that Jesus, the prodigal son who rose on the third day and suffered for 41, yeah, he ain't coming back for a long, long time. I'll let y'all sit on that. So this is my last poem. I wrote this with, I don't know if C. Thomas is in the audience. I didn't look at the participant participation list, but he holds this uh, writer's workshop every first and third Monday of the month. Um, I encourage you to check out creativesuperman.org for a rundown schedule, but he does this um, these writing prompts. We have a long conversation and we have these writing prompts. And um, I wrote this after I experienced a pretty tragic Pretty unfortunate event with a friend of mine. A shower that reeks of mold, using towers I do not own, breathing through my mouth and not my nose, searching through covers for the rest of my clothes. Forehead kiss, I feign a smile. It's nice to see friends you haven't seen in a while. Bare feet, mu bare feet move across cold tile floor. Morning sun, morning sun, snatches me up like a hard-headed child. I get in my car, I turn on a podcast, some shit about a black creator who works at the Museum of Modern Art. Normally I roll my eyes green with envy, but today I open my heart. To the sister who got away on cold tile with bare feet, who paved the way for, who strengthened shoulders for, who seeks to uplift, no desire to compete. I see her standing on the street, shoulder length locks tucked behind her ear. I pull up and ask if she needs a ride. And she says, sure, but where do we go from here? And that's it, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, Brit. Y'all, show some love right now. I see the chat showing some love. Yo, Brit Sankofa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like the honesty, the raw emotion, the imagery, all of it. Yeah. 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 Um you. yo, this this has been a night. This is this has <laughs> look. Um I cried twice. I cried twice. <laughs> look, I've been like, oh, I'm on camera. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hold it together. Um Real quick, Britt, um, I know that Britt Sankofa's information was up a second ago. Up oh, there it is, and so I can read it out loud for everyone. Um, socials for Britt Sankofa, at B-R-I-T-T -T dot Sankofa, S-A-N-K-O-F-A -A on Instagram. Britt Sankofa, all one word, on Twitter. Cash app, dollar sign, B-R-I-T-T. -T. B R I T T B R I T T. That's right, Brit 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 on Cash App, um, and then for merch and, and ex other etc. sort of stuff, uh, BritSankofa.weebly.com. So yeah, definitely uh, you know show up in the in the jump tip the artist. Also, uh, the feature card is readily available in the chat as well. Um, and I've been seeing folks signing. There's love being spread. It's all kinds of real. Um, and yeah, Britt, feel free to scroll up and just see the way that folks have been vibing with and showing love to you. Because um, I know while you're sharing, it is hard to see and feel what cats are, cats are receiving. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Drew Tang, where you at, my brother? 
I respect my nine to five as the way I make cream, but I'm annoyed by my nine to five because it interrupts my daydreams of kicking it with you, gazebos in the park, free throws in the dark. You know I steal on my mall. I like the way you smile when I put them flowers in your hand, acting shy like close your eyes, taking a shower with your man. Aquaman needs a mermaid, so together we can abandon this land. Like Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah in Splash. I went from being stressed and confused to meeting you and being obsessed with your muse. Any dude would be blessed to get you. And I don't even mean sexually, boo. The Mona Lisa is a bony creature next to you. So why don't you and I see how together this flows? I want you on that runway wearing me instead of them clothes. And you relieve pain way more than Excedrin, yo. So what's up with you? Let me know. Cause yo, I'm digging you, darling. You wicked like a fifth of Bacardi. Hitting like the split of a Marley. Little dime piece me, she need to get with the dawn. So what I'm saying is, come and get the twip in New Orleans. I'm digging you, darling. You wicked like a fifth of Bacardi. Hitting like the split of a Marley. Little dime piece me, she need to get with the dawn so you could come. So you could come. See, the subject of what I do be you. Outfit sick as if your shoes got the flu. Dress got the bubonic plate. Coat custom made. Nails painted bright. You shine light on player shade. Other words, mommy, you ill. Sorry, let me explain so you can know exactly how I feel. In my neck of the woods, we spit that backwards talk. Means you don't understand unless you hear it stop. I peep the convo, pause, collab, so we can combinate. Set the pace and set the place so I can know what speed you need to make this thing go in the right direction so I can have your perfection. I'm put. I'm prepared to thank my lucky stars. I've just been floating out here a lonely Mars. And there's nothing in between us, Venus, but Earth. I walked this entire planet just to prove your worth. Cause I'm digging you, darling. You're wicked like a fifth of a card. Hitting like a spliff of a Marley. Little dime piece niece, you need to get with the dance. So you can come get a taste of DC, little mama. I'm dick ah, dick ah, dick 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 ah, little dime piece niece, you need to get with the dance. So you can come. So you can come. This track brings me back to Boogie Monsters, Honey Dips, honey dips and Gotham. It's Dion's son, Detox Shun. No relation to Dre's disc, because PZC these dates sacred. Valentine's Day 2012, Honey Bell, 10 years, 10 albums, still hungry as hell. But like that other Dre, I cannot afford to not record. Floods of flow, another love below. So cuddle up and get cozy. Bubble up with my mimosa until your cup runneth over. Hunt up under the doja. Can't hold the one you love, love the one that you're holding. Many called the love, but only one was the chosen. And I'm humbly hoping I'm the one that you're chosen. About to have a brother proposing. Let's make love until we come in with oceans. Enough to wake up the souls of those who jump from the boats because I'm digging you, darling. You wicked like a fifth of Bacardi, hitting like a spliff of a Marley. Little dime piece, niche needed to get with the dawn so you could come get a little bitty whip in New Orleans. I think a da, tick a tick a tick a da da, tick a tick a tick a da, you little, so we could, so you could, so I could, so we could, so we could, so swoon. Do I? Boom. Yo, spit that residency, Woolly Mammoth. Thank y'all for listening and watching. Yes, indeed. So we have had Lo May, also known as Lauren May, um, Cash App Kalo, uh, at Long Love Lo on Instagram and Twitter. We've also had Brit Sankofa, that's Cash App dollar sign, Brit, 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 at uh, Brit.Sankofa on Instagram and at Brit Sankofa on Twitter. Your next joint, the next bit that digital event will be September 7th. Um, the feature is your favorite poets, favorite poets. Um, and so the theme is gonna be a whole lot of love regarding some incredible writers and you will be knowing who those features are very soon. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Goodbye. Goodbye.